With the third dungeon completed, now is the time for the glitch I despise the most, Angler Key Skip. There's a few other setups in order to reach the fourth dungeon, but I'll choose to cover the fastest, the Guardian Acorn version. Guardian Acorns spawn every time that you've killed 14 enemies without losing health. Dying by the shopkeeper doesn't count. So we'll manipulate when the next acorn is going to spawn in order to line up the glitch. A simple way to line up the spawn is to get hit during the dream sequence by an arm mimic. There's exactly 14 arm mimics in this room. Killing 5 and then taking damage means that you'll need to kill 5 Borblin in order for the acorn to spawn. Note that the number of enemies that you've killed is part of the information the game saves. This makes the trick a lot easier to practice as you don't need to execute this part of the setup every time. The Borblin to manipulate is this one. Without going into too much details, its spawn point is close enough for him to reach the desired spot. First, make sure that he sees you and move yourself to the wall corner near the ladder. Once the Borblin is in the corridor, move past the corner so it loses interest. This corner is the end of its aggressivity radius, which is based off its spawn point. Once it lost interest, run and jump over him, make sure it backs up all the way against the wall, making sure you don't go past its aggressivity radius. While the Borblin backs up, note those two grass blades against the wall. You'll want to line up Link's shield roughly between these two lines. Wait for the Borblin to throw a spear and then quickly move in position using your shield to line yourself up. Spam B to kill the Borblin. The acorn should be placed properly with the tip of the nut between half the first and the start of the second. Jump over the acorn and climb the ladder. If everything went well, the climb over animation should have been overridden by the acorn collected animation. Once the collection animation is done, the game returns you in a climbing state, resulting in an air climb. Long story short, we now have a second invisible ladder above the real one. At the top of this ladder, which is slightly higher than when Link's head lines up with the back wall, you'll want to jump on top of the right wall which prevents Link from jumping downwards. The arrow represents your joystick orientation. If you want more information about invisible walls, the last tutorial has you covered. Once on top of the wall, do a fast glide and start mashing Rock's feather. If you were at the right spot on top of the wall, you should end up on the corner of the two invisible walls, giving you roughly 4 frames to jump. This position is not horribly precise, but can be frustrating to hit. Once Link jumped, change your direction from up to down. You want to lodge yourself between the back wall and the lower, usually unreachable wall. Once stuck there, hold right until you fall down on the visual wall. From there, be mindful of your movement as being slightly too close to the river will warp you back and too close to the edge might push you back in bounds. If the acorn is too far from the ladder, you were too far left when killing the Borblin. If the acorn is too close, you are probably too far right. For the whole part above the invisible walls, it is hard to have good visual cues as the perspective constantly shifts. I'd really like to help you more with that part, but it's mostly something to get a feeling for, and as I said, this is the one trick I really dread. If you have any other tips for either me or other viewers, leave them in the comment section. I'll make sure to pin and or add information to the description that could help everyone.